everything that we learned about frequency and descriptive statistics for categorical data also holds true when we're using quantitative or continuous data, although sometimes with a twist. For instance, let's re-examine simple frequency. Simple frequency for quantitative data describes the number of times that a range of scores occurs. When we're using categorical data, it is very simple. How many categories do we have? The five types of dog toys. And how many are in each category? How many dogs selected this particular toy as their favorite? But with quantitative data, we have to create categories called bins or classes in order to use it as categorical data. Let me show you what I mean. Now, typically, I use a ruler to represent scale data. But if we are using a scale as part of our categorical descriptive statistics, we have to split that scale into bins or groupings. So we have now three concerns. The number of bins, the width, of those bins and the limits of those bins, the starting point and the ending point capturing that bin. Choosing the number of bins will depend upon your sample size. You want to choose enough bins that it displays the variability within the data, but not so many bins that you end up with bins that are empty. And no matter what size of bin you choose, the bin width should always be equal. So as a good rule of thumb, between 5 and 20 bins would be optimal, depending upon the size of your data set. Large data sets will require more bins, smaller data sets, fewer bins. The number of bins that you choose will influence the width of those bins. The width of the bins is the difference between the largest and the smallest values in your data set divided by the total number of bins. You can determine this a priori depending upon how many data points you have, or it's very common to use trial and error to try to dial in the ideal number of bins to summarize the frequency distribution of the data. And there's nothing wrong with running your descriptive statistics multiple times in Excel, adjusting bin widths, playing with statistical software to get that bin width ideal to best display your data most honestly and most clearly. The third concern that we have is bin limits. Which values are included in a particular bin? So let's pretend that we are using values like four, five, six, seven, and this is the category for five. We will put five at the center of this bin, but think about what you know about rounding. You see, the bin five will not include just fives. They'll include 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, and will include values of four, like 4.7 and 4.8. So really, the bin limits on this bin would range from 4.5, which would round up to 5, to 5.49, which would round down to 5. At 5.5, that value would roll into the bin for 6. Therefore, we have a lower limit, the smallest possible data point in the bin, and an upper limit, the largest possible data point in the bin. Every data point in our data set must belong to one and only one bin. And midway in between is the bin midpoint, halfway between the lower and the upper bin limit. We're going to get some additional practice with number of bins, width of bins, and bin limits. And then after we do that, we are going to create histograms for our binned continuous data.